What is the pH of a 0.2 molarity solution of paridine, C5H5N, in an aqueous solution? The Kb of paridine is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 9. Well, first question we ask ourselves, is this a single solute or is it a reaction? It's a single solute. Next question comes up, is it an acid, a base, or a salt? Now, you may say, I have no idea what paridine is. Well, the nice thing about Gen Chem is that sometimes we give you the answer in the problem itself. Since that it said the KB of paridine, KB of paridine, and we're talking about paridine, which is the same substance, that is a clear indication that we're talking about a base here. Okay, it's telling me the KB of it, so it's telling me it's a base. So by that fact, I know that it's a base. Okay. Now, don't get to the point that if you see a Ka or Kb given, that that's telling me that in the problem I'm going to use that. Okay, what do I mean by that? You may be given, say, ammonia chloride, and I'm trying to talk about the pH of that solution, okay, NH4Cl, and they give me the Kb of ammonia, NH3. Okay, well, what I'm really needing to work this problem is the Ka of NH4+. Plus ammonia ion. But they gave me the KB. I can't just take the KB and use it just because it was given to me. I'm going to have to take that KB and convert it into KA. And we're going to show you later on how to do that. But I want you to understand that in this case, they gave me the KB of ammonia. And I'm looking at an ammonia ion compound. That's not the same thing. In this case, I was given the KB of paridine, and I'm looking for paridine. Therefore, that's telling me it's a base. There's a difference there. Okay, same species KB as the species I'm trying to find the pH of. Example over here, I'm not. I'm talking about the pH of a solution of something that's not the K that's given to me. We've got to fix that. But I'll show you how to do that later on. Okay, not needed in this problem. So, since it's a base... Uh, since it's KB given to me of the same substance, is exactly the same substance, we know it's a base. Now you may say, well, I don't know if it's strong or weak. Well, you do, because if you know the strong ones, then you know what? Everything else is weak. So therefore, this is a weak ass. Oh, excuse me, a weak base. Now, how are we going to work the problem? Same way we did the acid stuff, okay? We'll do the three same three steps as before. We write our equation and make the ice table. Then we'll set up the equilibrium constant expressions and then solve for X. Major difference here is that X is going to be equal to hydroxide. It's not going to be equal to hydronium. So this is where the problem changes a little bit. Okay. So we set it up the same way. Write the equation in the ice table. And I strongly suggest you do this every time. Don't take shortcuts. Write the whole thing out. Then you set up your expression, solving for that equilibrium constant expression. And then you solve for X, which is your hydroxide. And this is important. This is where errors happen when we're talking about a base and people call it hydronium and it's hydroxide. So you have your base reaction. You know this is a base. You know this is an acid. So you know the acid is going to donate a proton. So you have your neutral species, C5H5N, now has an extra H plus on it. Okay, because it gained that proton. And then you lost the proton on the water, so you get OH minus. You should be able to write those reactions real easy using your bronsted lowery concept. Set up my ice table. I have my initial concentration of 0 0.2, 0 for my conjugate acid, and approximately 0 for the hydroxide. Remember the same thing as the acid. We're assuming water is being neglected, so we can compare that if we want to the final answer. Make sure we're getting uh, greater than 10 to the minus 6 molarity in hydroxide. We know we can do this to assumption. I need it to change. I don't know which way it's going. Well, since it's zeros on the product side, it has to go to the right, which should be the case for all this acid-based stuff. Since it's going to the right, I'm going to have minuses on my change on my reactant side and pluses on my product side. don't know how much change, so I'm going to call it X. I'm going to be X, X, and X. It's all one-to-one. -one. And then I need to be 0.2 minus X, X, and X. This is where the next important question comes up. How is XX and 0.2 minus X related? The way this reaction is written it is written as a base hydrolysis. Therefore, they're related through KB. This is where if I would have wrote it and I had like the ammonia ion problem, 
I would say, oh, I need a KA. And then you look back in the problem and you say, oh, I got a KB. I got to go from KB to KA somehow. Okay. That's important when we ask this question of what K do you need and what K were you given? If you weren't given the correct one, you're going to have to fix that. So I set up my KB expression, which would be my conjugate acid times my hydroxide ion divided by my paradigm. So I'll plug in my values, x, x, 0.2 minus x, which gets me x squared over 0.2 minus x, equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 9. I can do the quadratic, or I can eliminate it just like we did the acids. I will compare my 0.2 to my kb in this case. If it's greater than 100, I can neglect x. I also can look at the powers of 10 to make my decision as well. So mathematically, if we do that, 0.2 divided by 1.4 times 10 to the minus 9, I get 1.4 times 10 to, the, 10 to the positive 8, which is way larger than 100, which means I can neglect x. I can also look at powers of 10, which would be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the minus 1 and 10 to the minus 9. That's way more than 3 powers of 10 difference. So on both accounts, we neglect the x. So in essence, we're saying 0.2 minus x is equal to 0.2. We're basically neglecting that x. Don't forget to check the assumption because if it, if it doesn't if it doesn't pass, then you do the, don't do the quadratic formula. You're going to get the incorrect answer, especially on the homework. Okay, on that homework assignment 29, you had to make sure that you checked that it passed. If it didn't pass, then there's a possibility that you got the wrong answer. And it would be saying something like, you're close on the computer, which is because you did the neglecting and you didn't do the actual quadratic formula. So continuing on, I now know that I can get rid of that minus x. Okay. Which sets it up to be x squared over 0.2, equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 9. Bring over my 0 0.2 to both sides, which now gets me to x squared is equal to 2.8 times 10 to the minus 10th. Now I can take the square root of both sides, which now gives me x is equal to 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5th. Here comes an important question. What does x represent in this problem? Okay, going back to the problem, x is represented right here. It equals to the hydroxide concentration as well as the conjugate acid concentration. It's important to ask yourself this and set up the reaction in ice table because this is where errors happen. This is where you're going to call it hydronium and it's hydroxide and then get things incorrectly. So it equals the hydroxide as well as our conjugate acid concentration, which is important, isn't in, important to us in this particular problem. So now I got to go from hydroxide concentration to pH. We're going to go through pOH, which is a negative log of a concentration of OH minus, which is a negative log of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is 4.77. Now realize that is the pOH. Okay, and this is where if you asking yourself the questions of the answer makes sense, and say, oh, this is a base. What kind of pH should I have? It should be a basic pH, and you see it's 4.77. You should say, dawn on you that oh, this is pOH, not pH. I still got to go one more step pH then is equal to 14 minus pOH, which is 14 minus 4.77, which is equal to 9.23. Now I want to ask myself, and does the question make sense? The answer is yes, because it's an acid. I mean, excuse me, it's a base pH, and I got a base uh, component. Hey, it was a base, and I should get a basic pH, which is what we got, 9.23. It's important to ask yourself those questions along you go because there's spots where you can make mistakes. One mistake is KAKB. If you don't have the right K for the reaction, that's where a mistake can happen. Okay, If you need KA, you need KA. You cannot use KB. You're going to have to flip-flop it. Uh, what does X represent? Is it hydronium hydroxide? Depends on if it's a base or an acid. Another problem is here, when this particular slide where you're trying to calculate pH. you got to make sure you're calculating from pOH to pH correctly. Okay, those are errors where careless mistakes happen. And as long as you're checking yourself along the way, it can help you avoid those careless mistakes. Now this particular point, I want to show you how I tend to calculate pH when I'm dealing with a base. 
uh, I don't like to do things I don't have to. Okay, so if you look, when you do the calculation, I'll be taking my log of hydroxide. It'd be sitting on my calculator. I can easily go to pH without having to worry about negative signs, etc. by following the next the, the following uh, equation. Negative log of OH minus concentration is equal to the POH, which means basically that goes right in that location right there. So I can rearrange this equation and say, combine them into one and say that it's pH is equal to 14 minus POH, which is equal to 14 minus a minus a log of the concentration of hydronium ion. What happens when I take the minus of a minus or something? That becomes a plus. So in essence, I have a new formula. I know that pH is equal to 14 plus the log of the hydroxide concentration. Okay, 14 plus the log of the hydroxide concentration. So on my calculator, I take the log of my concentration, which I already have sitting there on my calculator, and then all I do is add 14. I don't have to worry about changing signs. So I tend to take the log of that concentration of hydroxides that's sitting there after I solve for X and add 14 to it. In this case, be 14 plus the log of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is 9.23. Now one correction I want to give you on the second edition of the book, okay, for the second edition of the book, um, on page 552, example 8, okay, they had this uh, sign right here incorrect. They had it as a minus. That should be a plus. That's in the second edition. If you're in a, law or a later edition book, then it should be corrected. Homework 32. Okay, homework 32 deals with base questions and calculating the pH of bases. Remember those things I talked about where the errors happen. Make sure that you're doing those things correctly.